different accessories have different back focus consumptions, which change the camera sensor distance to and from the focal plane. So what do you do in those scenarios in order to achieve the proper back focus for your setup? Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into back focus and what to do with different accessories that have different back focus consumptions so you can achieve the proper focus. And also what to do when you have an accessory that has a very specific back focus requirement and how to achieve that back focus requirement. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's head on over and learn how to achieve proper back focus with different accessories. In my first back focus video, mastering telescope back focus, lining up with the focal plane, we learned that light is directed through the optical system of your telescope. And in the final stages, that light is directed to a point called the focal plane. And the objective of focusing your telescope is the process of lining up your camera sensor with the focal plane by means of racking your draw tube in or out and also by use of spacers between your draw tube and camera sensor in order to optimize the location of your draw tube while in focus in order to prevent issues such as flexure and also running out of room for further focusing throughout the night during temperature changes. Now it's important to understand that in setups that are not utilizing specialized accessories that have very specific back focus requirements, back focus is traditionally measured from the center of the final lens or mirror to the focal plane. Also, the focal plane location is gonna be very personal to the telescope brand, make, model, and type. And in my first back focus video, I demonstrated back focus as the general rule of thumb 55 millimeters as measured between the draw tube and camera sensor. So if you already know your telescope's back focus requirements and you have a much different number, that would be why. Now, there are two reasons that I demonstrated in the manner that I did. One is if you do not have specialized tools in order to measure the back focus of your telescope, this is an easy way to obtain focus without having to go out and buy the specialized tools to figure it out. Also, by demonstrating in the manner that I did, it sets the stages for what I'm about to show you. When picking out accessories for your telescope, it's important to pay attention to the dimensions of those accessories, specifically the thickness of those accessories, as that's going to be the back focus consumption that that accessory will have. Now, sometimes the product description will have back focus consumption listed, but if it doesn't, what you're looking for is the thickness from casing to casing. And that number is important to know because we're worried about back focus. How much back focus does each accessory take up? Now, remember from my first back focus video, your camera itself also has native back focus. And I gave the example of the ASI 533MC and the ASI 2600MC. Both of those cameras have a native back focus of 17 and a half millimeters. Also, both of those cameras came with two spacers. You have a 16 and a half millimeter spacer and a 21 millimeter spacer. Both of those spacers are designed to give the camera the general average of 55 millimeters of back focus. Now, when you are installing accessories, when you're not using an accessory that has a very specific back focus requirement, such as this coma corrector here, let's just pretend that this coma corrector doesn't exist for a moment, you have a little bit more leniency. Now, what I mean by that is in my first back focus video, I demonstrated how taking out a spacer will bring the camera closer to the draw tube 
And what that means is that the draw tube has to be further extended or further racked out in order to put the camera in the correct position. On the flip side, if you add a spacer, that brings the camera further away from the draw tube, meaning that your draw tube has to be further in or more racked in in order to put the camera in the correct position. You have more leniency with accessories when you're not using something that requires specific back focus. I'll give you an example. I have two filter drawers here. One is a ZWO filter drawer. This is 21 millimeters thick. The other one is a Star Arizona filter drawer. This one is 17 and a half millimeters thick. When we combine the two spacers that came with the ASI 533 and ASI 2600 cameras, when you combine these and you add in the native back focus of those cameras, you have 55 millimeters of back focus. Now remember, it's important to know what the native back focus is of your specific camera because it matters. If we wanted to add this ZWO filter drawer into the uh, imaging train, what we're gonna find is that we don't need the 21 millimeter spacer. In other words, the ZWO filter drawer is 21 millimeters. So we'll install this filter drawer in place of the 21 millimeter spacer, and we'll be able to maintain the 55 millimeters of back focus in this example. Now, you'll, you might find that your back focus is a little bit different, and that's okay. The concept applies the same. On the flip side, if we use this Star Arizona filter drawer, which is 17 and a half millimeters, what I would do in this case is remove the 16 and a half millimeter spacer from the imaging train and replace it with this 17 and a half millimeter uh, Star Arizona filter drawer. What that'll end up doing is spacing my camera one millimeter further from the draw tube. In other words, this filter drawer is 17 and a half millimeters versus 16 and a half millimeters. So I'm adding one millimeter to the back focus. All that that means is that my draw tube now needs to be racked in one millimeter from its original position to keep my camera in the same position. You have more leniency. When you're using an accessory, such as this uh, Explore Scientific Focal Extender, this does not have a back focus requirement. So we can use this in the same way that we would use just the camera with well, I'll just say a filter drawer with the draw tube. What you're gonna do is install this uh, focal extender and you're going to perform the steps that I outlined in my first back focus video. What I would recommend in a case like this is just like in the first video, starting with your, uh, you know, we'll call it the 55 millimeter back focus as that is what my cameras have and then you'll go from there like normal. If you find, this is my recommendation, what I have found with accessories like this, if you find that you're starting with the 55 millimeter back focus with, you know, for example, this Explore Scientific Focal Extender, and you can't find focus, I would remove the spacers and start over. Starting with your draw tube fully extended and slowly work your way in. And then I would just add spacers as needed until I find focus. Now, in this particular case, what I found with my Skywatcher 200P is that I had my focal extender installed into my draw tube and my 55 millimeters of back focus was able to allow me to find focus you may or may not have the same experience. If you don't, again, remove all the spacers, start from scratch, and add spacers as needed until you find focus. Now, if you have an accessory, such as this coma corrector, that requires 
a very specific back focus. In this case, the Skywatcher Quattro Coma Corrector requires 55 millimeters of back focus. That's a different story. That 55 millimeters of back focus is there in order to gain correct focus as well as allow the coma corrector to do its job correctly. We need to follow that very specifically. Now, if you have, we'll take the 533 and 2600 for example, we have the spacers already that came with the camera that allow it to have 55 millimeters of back focus one while you include the native back focus. Let me reword this really quick. From the flange of the coma corrector to the camera sensor needs to be 55 millimeters. In the case of the ASI 533MC and the ASI 2600MC, the native back focus is 17 and a half millimeters. The two spacers, 16 and a half millimeters and 21 millimeters, allow the sensor to be 55 millimeters from the flange of where it's installed. That is very specific and we need to follow that in order for the coma corrector to do its job and also gain focus. Now, if you wanted to add some accessories, such as a filter drawer, we also need to follow that 55 millimeters. Now we already know the ZWO filter drawer is 21 millimeters. So all we have to do is remove the 21 millimeter spacer, put the 21 millimeter filter drawer in its place, and we're good to go with 55 millimeters. What if we um, wanna use something else? Let's take a rotator, for example. This is my exact setup. Again, you want to know from casing to casing, how thick is this? This particular uh, Pegasus Astro Falcon rotator is 19 millimeters thick from casing to casing. That's if you are not using the nose piece. The nose piece will add one millimeter. Fortunately, this coma corrector threads right into this rotator so I don't need the nose piece. So all I'm going to consider is 19 millimeters from casing to casing. We have 17 and a half millimeters of native back focus in the ASI 533MC and the 2600MC. I also use a filter drawer in order to install filters. Now this filter drawer is 17 and a half millimeters thick. Now, when you add the 19 millimeters for the rotator, the 17 and a half millimeters for the filter drawer, and the 17 and a half millimeters of native back focus on the ASI 533MC and ASI 2600MC, we come up with 54 millimeters of back focus. How do we resolve that? Because we still need one more millimeter. Well, that problem is easy to solve. Most of your astrophotography suppliers will have little spacers like this, little shims. This is one millimeter thick. So what I would simply do is take my rotator, take my 17 and a half millimeter Starzona filter drawer, and then this little one millimeter spacer would just sit right on the threads that the camera would thread into. You thread the camera on top, and now you have 55 millimeters of backspacing. The coma corrector then threads into the bottom of the rotator, and you install it into your focuser like normal. And now we've met the 55 millimeters of back focus. Now, your setup might be different. You might have different accessories. You might have different back focus requirements. The pieces just fit together like a puzzle. You just need to find the right combination of spacers and also shims that you need. And they're all readily available on your astrophotography suppliers. Starzona, High Point Scientific, Agena Astro. In fact, Agena Astro is exactly where I got this little shim from. 
and it comes in handy. And they also, I believe, sell them in packages of different sizes in case you need them. And they're not too terribly priced either. The last thing that you want to be, uh, be mindful of is threading. You want to make sure that you know which thread pitch that you're using, which threads that you're using with your accessories, M42, M48, so on and so forth. Now, there are times where you may need to step up or step down your threading. And that's where pieces like this come in. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you got threads on the outside and threads on the inside. What I use this for, the threads on the bottom of this rotator are too big for my coma corrector. And this little guy right here makes that problem very easy to resolve. In fact, if I go ahead and I remove the cap for my coma corrector, I take this little guy right here and I will thread it onto the coma corrector. And once this is threaded onto the coma corrector, this then we'll call it stepping up the threads to the next size so the rotator can thread right in. Now these are available where you have zero back focus consumption or you can get them where they do consume back focus. So if you need to step up or step down threads, you have the opportunity to not take up any back focus, such as this piece right here, or you can get them where they do take up back focus. And you are looking for what's called back focus consumption or thickness. It should be written in the description or specification section of the product page. And if you're not sure, go ahead and contact the supplier. They should be able to tell you if it's able to take up back focus or not. And from there, you just fit everything together like a puzzle piece in order to gain the correct back focus that you need for the specific uh, accessory. Now, I know this could be a little bit uh, of a complicated subject. There are so many different variables and options, it's impossible to cover them all. So I just kind of wanted to do a basis, uh, a general idea of what it takes to do this. Um, if you have any questions, if you need me to reword anything, please drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. And uh, other than that, that is pretty much um, back focus, how to fine tune. And um, whenever you are uh, at a point where you have your setup, your accessory setup where you want it to be, now it's time to refine focus because sometimes it can change, right? This uh, focal extender is not supposed to take up any back focus. It's not supposed to modify back focus. That's in a perfect world. We don't live in a perfect world. So sometimes you'll find that you may need to make some minor adjustments to your um, draw tube or maybe a spacer or two. And that's okay. That's just uh, part of this hobby. Um, and when you're trying to find focus, just run through what I outline in my first back focus video where you extend all the way out. You throw on a live mode or a loop of exposures in Nina during the day pointed at a, a distant tree or mountain, something that's easy to um, identify focus when you start getting close and slowly start racking in until you find focus and make sure that your draw tube is in an ideal position, not too far extended where you have flexure, but you also want enough room to where you can um, adjust focus as you go through the night when temperature changes. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That uh, channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Throw a comment in the comment section. Did you find this useful? What questions do you have? Do you have a different method of doing this? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.